Welcome back, Resin Maniacs, to another episode of Out of the Box with Shaky Dave. Today's episode, we have something that's out of the bag. What we're looking at is 2016's release of The Royal Birth from Artist Proof Studios. Now, this kit has to be most likely one of my favorite kits of the year, mainly for this reason. It is based off of Chris Cunningham's concept art for Alien 4 when they were working on different versions of the hybrid. I love kits that are based off concept art because you didn't get to see it in the movie, so now you get to own it in all three dimensions. So what we're looking at here is we're gonna unwrap head number one. Head number one seems to have an open mouth pose and the nice, well, dome, I guess you'd say, because this, this is sculpted, none other by, by the way, the very talented and one hands down one of my all-time favorite sculptors, William Paquette. And he was the right choice for this because the guy is just wonderful at doing creepy, gross, macabre. I don't know, he's just really good with this kind of stuff. I'm at a loss for words, kind of. Um, anyway, there's head number one. And then we're gonna unroll, and here's head number two, or this is head number one, whichever you prefer. So what you're looking at is you actually have an open mouth and closed mouth version. So, and as you can see, they're actually very quite similar in every respect, except one has an open mouth and closed mouth. In fact, it almost looks like most likely he sculpted one because you can see a lot of matchups in the detail. Sculpted one, most likely made a quick mold and poured out in maybe wax or what have you and then sculpted the other face uh, differently, which is just fine because what you're looking at there, that makes for a better change of head fit. Um, and honestly, to say which head is my favorite, I cannot, I don't know. I like both very much. The inside of the mouth of this is very disgusting. Uh, you can just see um, the layout of just what seems to be just a, a nasty maw, which is the type of things I like in this hobby and in my monsters. Now we're looking at the piece when it first came, it was wrapped up in a bag, which I never mind. I don't mind if it kits in a bag or in a box or, or uh, what have you. But uh, the head was wrapped like this. So part number three, seems to be almost like a cross between an egg and um, embryonic sac, which I really love disgusting stuff like this again too because you're kind of free to paint it how you wish. Um, and you're just looking at um, nasty gross pieces of flesh or sac that have uh, uh, broken and you look around it's almost kind of the um, hint or, or, or nuance of what would be like an alien egg. And you could paint that as such leading into a more fleshy, sacky color uh, like an embryo because if you look at the inside of the alien eggs in the movies, they have that look too. And then here we go with what would be one of the main parts of the kit, the body. What I love about this is it's just gross. Um, it's done in a very like um, just malformed uh, with a bulbous belly and a terribly arched back. Um, and it's, it's very much just like a nice cross between. I mean, you can see elements of the alien's rib cage and, you know, the way the spine is uh, protruding. But it, it just looks like a, uh, well, a gross baby. And I think that's what it's supposed to be. So what we're looking at here is a nice four piece kit. Now, because it came in a bag, there's no cover art or anything like that. However, you do get some placards and I like stuff like this because uh, they always end up like on my refrigerator or hanging up in my studio somewhere. What you're looking at here is just some art, uh, sketched artwork and you see Artist Proof Studio, blogspot.com. So you can check out their blog and contact them about this or any other kits. And you see here, Royal Birth, sculpted by William Paquette. And as I said earlier, he's hands down one of my favorite sculptors. In fact, he 
is the perfect fit for a piece like this. Um, he's just really good at capturing what's disturbing. Um, and he's well known for being really great at sculpting hands, and here you get one. So that's always a plus. What we're looking at now is how this kit fits together. First, we'll check out the heads. Now, it's a switch-o head, which, as you can see here, it fits in very nicely. So, uh, there's no key. You can make your own key with a pin. You could uh, drill it out and use rare earth magnets. And I would highly recommend if you do use magnets, use rare earth because the more magnets you stack, the stronger it gets. So, you could uh, bore it out and put in four magnets in here, bore it out and put in four magnets in here, and you have a stronger hold than is if you use one magnet and one magnet. I digress. So we're looking at a nice fit. It's very nice and flush. Now, if you're going to keep it switcho, you're going to have a seam here. Uh, that might bother some modelers, but even if you decide to go with one head and you cover up this seam and aves it in or putty it in, you're going to have a lot of painting issues with the way this comes down across the back. You can, I mean, it can be done, but it looks like regardless, you're going to have to do this in sub-assembly paints. Um, me personally, I prefer doing things in sub-assembly paints. The other good thing about this being a switch-o head is that with both of these heads, with a little bit of aves and some patience, you could somewhat mask the, uh, the, the uh, seam line that you create by uh, maybe make an overhanging flap of like nasty skin or a goiter or, or what have you. Um, but what's great about it being a switch-o head is that you can paint each dome completely different. Uh, for example, you could try the uh, traditional skull look with this and um, then with this just give it that nice uh, sepia you know that they use an alien for with the sepia tones or sepia whichever you prefer to say and then maybe some sponging up the back um, you could paint both of these parts exactly the same and do the domes completely different so it always displays differently now for the body to the uh, base matchup this is where it gets tricky this is where you're gonna to have to get clever and you don't need to be a super advanced modeler to handle it either. What you're looking at, because the resin on the limbs, well, the limbs are so thin, the resin kind of constricts in a little bit. So when you go to match this up, it, not every piece lines up as it should. This isn't a, a sculpting issue or an engineering issue. This is just the way that when the resin cured it kind of shrank in a blow dryer or a heat gun keeping it moving is is going to make it for an easy uh assemblage that's not the problem the problem is pain because if you it, it fix him to this permanently you might run into some issues getting in down into the embryonic sac to paint into that so this is where you got to be clever you could, uh, what I do is I'd go ahead and bevel these sides down. So when you do go ahead and pin it, so that way when you do add your putty, the sides are beveled in to accept the putty. That is a trick I learned from reading uh, one of David Fisher's articles, an amazing figure modeler. Um, and then what you do there is go ahead, paint your body and paint your limbs, paint that, assemble that, and then do the putty. Don't use a solvent during this time because that eats paint. You can, you can smooth it out with a little bit of water and, um, or uh, it, 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 water works, but it's gonna take a little more patience. And then once that's done, you just paint to connect. Um, that's just one way, but there's more than one way to skin a cat. But looking at the painting options of this piece, once again, it's, your, your imagination is the limit here. You can paint it to look like a traditional xenomorph. You could do a, a mix between skin and the black and the silver and umbers. Uh, you could do the sepias with flesh tones. Um, it's, it's whatever you prefer. But uh, this is, like I said, this is one of my favorite kits to come out this year. And again, it's from Artist Proof Studios. 
Uh, the kit sells for $125 plus shipping. And Artist Proof Studios is Norman Myers. He generally works with Paul Komoda and William Paquette and a bunch of other great artists. And he's a great sculptor in his own right himself. And he, he, he's produced some of his own sculptures as kits as well. Uh, they're a very good company to get a hold of. Uh, ZombieJesus11 at Yahoo.com. Let me double check that. Gmail.com. ZombieJesus11 at gmail.com or I'm sure you can get a hold of them through artistproofstudio.blogspot.com um, Again, this is, this is a wonderful piece. I'm trying to think of anything else I could say about it. Um, check my notes. Uh, no, that's, that's about it. Uh, and again, if you're a, a fan of uh, just anything disgusting well this is perfect because it's an alien human hybrid sculpted by William Paquette you're not gonna beat that um, and again one thing I love about it is it's based on a concept that wasn't used in the movie and I'd like to see a lot more producers do kits like that it just it's like finding um, new rooms in an old familiar house you, you just you love the subject but here's a new little twist on it so please producers keep things like that coming and thanks for tuning in get a hold of norm and he could set you up with one of these it's a great kit and um again all you resume maniacs thanks and if you're not a resume maniac that's not our problem <laughs>